Well, hello everyone and welcome. I would like to introduce you to the team behind M3 Watch. This is going to be our front end team members, Jasmine and Lewis, and our back end team members, uh, Nate and myself. So, uh, by a show of hands, who gets annoyed when you're doing research and having to navigate between multiple window tabs? Don't we all? So, our goal was to cut down that time between navigating window tabs and consolidate that information into a dashboard view of important financial news and market data. This is an extremely important and useful application because there is a direct correlation between news and how stocks fluctuate. I'm going to turn it over to our uh, front end team members to further explain how our app works. Thank you, Michael. In the process of designing our app, we started looking at Google Materialize with the idea that our concept could be integrated into a larger system, such as an enterprise dashboard. This also would allow us to give our app a native look and feel so it would look comfortable on the type of devices the content might be viewed on. Also knowing that our content was going to be text heavy, we wanted to prioritize readability and optimize it for a user that would be on the go. The main way we achieved this was by limiting the number of items that would display on a page by really editing and de decluttering the whole thing. By looking at our initial mockups, you can start to see the basic elements we knew that we wanted to include and how we started to think about the layout hierarchy. We wanted the search bar at the top with the stock information very visible. The news stories would be the most recent and would take up the main part of the page with the keywords and recent searches to the sides. So now I'd like Nate to go over the technical development behind our app. Yep. So the first API we used was Yahoo Finance and it converted the user submitted company into a stock symbol. And then we use that stock symbol and put it into the market on demand API and we got the current price, the daily change in dollars and percentage, and also a timestamp of the last time that stock was traded locally. For our articles and current news, we use the New York Times API, so you would get a headline and a preview of an article and also a link to that full article on NewYorkTimes.com. The next two APIs we use were moment.js to provide the user a user-friendly format to view the time and see the date at what the articles were presented at. Also, we use Firebase to sort and track previous searches. So all searches were pushed to our database, and then we would populate our footer with popular searches in the most recent searches. I'm now going to pass it on to my man, Lewis, to explain the code. Thank you, Nate. All right, so what I have here for you all is a little flow chart of what's going on in blue. I have the different JavaScript files. In green, we have all the different functions that we've used for the application. And in orange, those little small boxes, um, I have the different APIs that we're pulling from. So essentially, I'm going to focus on strictly two of our JavaScript files, the stocks file and the New York Times file, because that's where we're pulling our main APIs from and getting our information. So basically, when we open up the application, we have the app.js file is just controlling the usability and controlling the search. So the search bar actually starts in the middle of the page. When a user submits a query, it moves to the top of the page, as we were talking about in our concept and how we're designing the page. That search is actually fitted in our stocks.js file where we grab a value from the search bar and it, the value would be like the name of a company. We input that into our get symbol function which grabs the value from search and inputs it into our first API which is Yahoo Finance API and from there we obtain the company name, the symbol associated with in terms of what it's trading, as well as the stock exchange. This then connects us to our get price function, which runs a second API, which is the market API. And from there we get more detailed information about the stock, such as the timestamp from when it was last trading, the price it was last trading at, the, the price change, as well as the percent change. We have here some if-then statements just controlling what, whether if the change is negative or positive, that will control the CSS, whether a positive arrow going, going up or negative an arrow going down, as well as if it's green or red. 
That get price uh, function also connects us to our New York Times.js file, um, namely the get articles function. So it grabs again that company name and inputs that into the New York Times API. And with that, we search for any articles that are related to the company, get the five latest articles, and we then uh, see information such as the headline for the article, the byline who wrote the article, as well as a snippet about a summary about the article, as well as where the article is linked, which then would open on a separate page. We also then created some functions to display the articles as well as our information in different divs on the page, as well as controlling whether or not if a search is successful or if it fails. In the case that it fails, we run the search fail function, which just displays that nothing was actually found. Okay, and I'm gonna pass it back over to Michael. All right, guys, so I'm gonna be going through a live demo. So for a first time investor, you're going to obviously want to make a smart choice in investing. So I'm going to pick a popular company, uh, Chipotle. As we see, Chipotle is stock is falling. What it does is we have our, our uh, box that shows keywords taken that are related to Chipotle. And out of these keywords, we have E. coli. Not great. <laughs> Food contamination and poisoning, not great. Burritos, pretty good. And Chipotle Mexican Grill. So also, we do have top news articles from the New York Times. And as anybody who is uh, serious about investing will do their own research and click, go through the article, and then this will help them make a decision on whether to invest or not. And personally, I would not invest in Chipotle right now. <laughs> also, another uh, key thing is our popular searches, which we which was explained before, displays five of the most popular and current searches. One thing important about investing is keeping up to date and seeing who's investing and what they're investing in. So we'll just go here and see how it looks like Amazon is a popular investment choice. And also, I will be slacking out a link so you guys could check this on your uh, mobile device or tablet. And now I'm going to turn it to Nate for future development. So for future development, if we had a little bit more time, the first thing we would probably implement is some performance updates. So I don't know if you noticed, but the program kind of lags when you first load it up and stuff, and we want to add some more slick animations in there. The next thing we would add would be a data range. So you would have a start and end date of where you want to see specific articles or how a specific stock performed in a data range. The next thing we would add would be support for charts. So if you want to see how the stock performed visually, you would open up the chart and the card would reveal more information about how it did yearly, monthly, and would give you a chart of that stock's performance. And also we want to add live updating. So you could open up this tab, search for a couple companies and keep it there all day and it would bring in more articles as they are found and also update the stock price as it changes. Now I'm gonna pass it back to Michael. <laughs> All right, so I hope we were able to show you how this could be a useful tool and application in doing uh, research based on investing in stocks. So besides that, do we have any questions? keyword card yeah, yeah, the keyword part. so New York Times API actually they give you keywords mm -hmm. and so we were just pushing those keywords into an array and then sometimes there would be duplicates so we would push those into another array and then we would print them to the there card. are keywords associated with each article and you could get that returned to you so like yeah so we had some plans to store out the duplicates so we had unique keywords
skyline is so good. Yeah. It, it looks like a professional pool for sure. Yeah. Material design. Plus one. So. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did not enjoy the material. <laughs> Yeah, if everyone doesn't mind just opening that. Can you guys open it up on Slack and let's just take a look at it, see if it changes? Look up Twitter on their page. Well, it would, we don't have a, like a live updating, like we said, so we would need to refresh every time. Yeah. set of keywords that are in that article.